Hello and welcome. Well, today, guys, we have a very special video because I had to come on here and film this dedicated video uh, for the comparison of these two fragrances, Maison Crivelli's Hibiscus Mahajad and Hibiscus Magic by Artisan Perfumery. Now, Artisan Perfumery is a collection that was launched probably about two two months ago by Fragrance World. And it has not been easy to get your hands on any of the fragrances from this collection, but to date, I've been able to get my hands on two. But the one that I really, really, really wanted to try is this one because this fragrance was supposedly inspired by Maison Crivelli's Hibiscus Mahajad. And it just so happens that this is one of my lifer fragrances and I absolutely love it. And I feel kind of a bit like offended, if I'm honest with you, that there is, you know, another fragrance house trying to kind of dupe it. So I want to personally see what this is really about. And I know that there's another fragrance that was launched by Cadillac, I think it's called Prestige, that is supposed to also be inspired by Hibiscus Mahajad, but my understanding is that this one is supposed to be closer than Prestige. So we're gonna go ahead and try this. And I haven't made up my mind, by the way, on if I'm, if I'm picking Prestige up or not to do the comparison, but at least we're gonna start with the Artisan Perfumery Hibiscus Magic. So what are we going to be doing today? So I'm going to be providing you with a very detailed comparison between Maison Crivelli's Hibiscus Mahajad and Artisan Perfumery's Hibiscus Magic. I'm going to be sharing information that I gleaned as a result of testing the fragrance and of course doing side-by-side -side comparisons with Maison Crivelli's Hibiscus Mahajat. But before we jump right in, if this is your first time here, I'm Arahi. I'm your fragrance concierge because everything that I do on this channel is designed to create a great fragrance experience for you. I upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Sundays, and sometimes you even get a bonus video for the week. If that sounds like the type of content that you're interested in and like a good plan, then please consider subscribing, give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget, leave a comment. Let's go. So we're going to go ahead and start by doing a notes comparison. I'm going to go ahead now and show you the notes of each of these fragrances. Go ahead and start by speaking about this fragrance. So as you noticed, it comes in this box. Very nicely done box. And then here is the bottle. And although the cap looks like it's foam, it's really not foam. I don't even know what material this is. It's like a very hard material of some sort, but it's a very, very nice bottle. It feels very luxurious, it does, and it's quite weighty. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this fragrance. So I've had the opportunity to use this fragrance two times. I tested it on a full day wear on skin and on clothes. And then the second time was the comparison testing with uh, Maison Crivelli's Hibiscus Mahajad. Now this fragrance, I'm not going to cover the comparison right now. I'm just gonna talk about this fragrance on its own. And then at the end of the video, I will definitely give you my observations when comparing it to the um, Hibiscus Mahajad. So to begin with, this fragrance opens quite spicy. The spicy is a bit fresh. Um, it's like a little bit uh, airy to call it something and then as soon as you pick up on the spices which primarily the spice that I pick up is cinnamon then it transitions into rose and the rose is not a mature rose but it's also not a young rose it is definitely a rose that is now giving a strong rose scent 
But in addition to the rose, there are other florals in here. I just haven't been able to distinguish them. Maybe as I continue to play with the fragrance in the future, I'll be able to tell you what other florals I'm picking up on, but there's definitely other florals in this fragrance. I know that Lily is one of the notes um, that were disclaimed, but I am telling you that in addition to the rose and the lily, which are the only two that they're showing in the note structure, I'm picking up on other florals. But we will have the opportunity to talk about the lily when I address the comparison between both fragrances, because if I speak about the lily now, I'll be giving away my thoughts. So once it opens with that fresh spicy where I pick up the cinnamon and the rose, there's also, as part of that freshness, I do pick up on the mintiness. And that mintiness to my nose is definitely peppermint. I don't pick up on the leather almost until the dry down and all throughout I am picking up on an ambery quality to this fragrance. There are definitely some woody notes in this fragrance. Um, I'm not necessarily sure that it's just cedar. I think that there's other woody notes in here because there's always a woody backdrop to all of the other notes that you will pick up on throughout the olfactory journey. But at the dry down, I definitely get the leather. Um, it's not a very dominant leather. To be honest with you, the fragrance performance in general for me is quite airy at this time. And I'm pretty sure that it's because it needs to macerate, um, but definitely that opening was a fresh, spicy, kind of minty with a little bit of florals included. And then as the journey continues, the leather comes into the scene with the vanilla. It's an ambery fragrance. And at the dry down, you can also kind of appreciate how the vanilla intensifies a bit. This is definitely not a sweet fragrance to my nose. Um, it could be considered a tad sweet, but it's so negligible that I didn't even want to mention that it's necessarily sweet because sweet is not necessarily what I'm picking up. More to come on what I am picking up. This fragrance right now is getting me seven hours without having to overspray. And I dare say that as it has the opportunity to macerate, it will definitely intensify. Will it reach beast mode status? I don't know, but based on how it's projecting, it may very well do so. In addition to that, I would definitely say that this is a unisex fragrance. Um, and I would say that 30 plus would be the group best suited for it. I also think that this is one that you can dress down, you can dress up, and you can use it all throughout the year for any season and any occasion. There is absolutely no oud in this fragrance. So now let's compare this fragrance with Maison Crivelli's Hibiscus Mahajad. So let's start by talking about how these fragrances open because they don't open the same way. Um, as I mentioned, when it comes to Hibiscus Magic, this is an opening that has dominantly a kind of like a uh, rose with kind of like a fresh spicy feel to it that then you clearly pick up on is cinnamon and it is a bit minty courtesy of like a peppermint note that has not been disclaimed but is definitely present. Um, while in Hibiscus Mahajad, the opening that I get on skin is quite a bit of rose to begin with, and there's a fresh spicy quality. It is very aromatic from the opening, and it also has a touch of greenness that I do not find in Hibiscus Magic. As the journey continues, I would say that one of the biggest differences that I found, and I really, really retested this because it, it's quite noticeable is the difference between the florals. I am picking up on lily in this fragrance, and if I'm honest, I'm picking up on a faint hibiscus note, but on this one, I'm definitely picking up just on hibiscus. The hibiscus is pretty dominant, and it's to the point that it's a note that you really, really have to love. If not, you will not like this fragrance. As the journey continues, you know, hibiscus mahajad will bring a certain degree of fruitiness to the forefront, while in hibiscus magic, I did not find any fruitiness at all. 
whatsoever. And I really did retest it to try and see if I had just missed, because you know, sometimes you can miss a note. But I will say that maybe after it has the opportunity to macerate, maybe those fruity notes will appear. But as of right now, there was no fruitiness in this fragrance while in Hibiscus Mahajad, there is definitely a fruitiness that you will pick up on midway in the olfactory journey. At the dry down, I would say that the biggest difference that I pick up between these two fragrances is the fact that I pick up on a very, very heavy musk in uh, Hibiscus Mahajad versus the benzoin that I pick up on Hibiscus Magic. That alone makes quite a bit of a difference at the dry down. You know, when the fragrances both open, they both kind of smell the same way, but almost like within seconds, you start to pick up on these differences which are not negligible because we're talking about dominant notes in Hibiscus Mahajad that have been completely obliterated or missed in Hibiscus Magic. As far as performance goes, that's another great difference between these two fragrances because you will find that in Hibiscus Mahajad, you are going to have a totally beast mode fragrance. This is a fragrance that without overspraying is going to get you eight plus hours. And if you overspray, you may choke yourself and all of those around you. Now, when it comes to Hibiscus Magic, what I am finding is that I am getting seven hours. But to be fair, this fragrance has not had the opportunity to macerate. It may reach a point where it is a beast mode as Hibiscus Mahajad. When it comes to sillage and projection, hibiscus mahajad on my skin has a very strong projection till almost probably the three hour mark. Hibiscus magic does not reach that at all whatsoever. And when it comes to sillage, I also get a moderate sillage from hibiscus mahajad that leaves a trail of at least two to three feet. So that is quite impressive. That may be the case in the future, but as of right now, Hibiscus Magic does not reach that level. Hibiscus Mahajad has always been a fragrance that I have always said that there is a touch of oud in the fragrance. There's definitely oud in the fragrance, and it is a present oud. I'm not picking up on any oud for the most part in Hibiscus Magic, but I think that that's also a function of needing to macerate. All in all, guys, these fragrances right now are not the same to me. I can't even say that Hibiscus Magic is a twist on Hibiscus Mahajad. I think that these two fragrances, if anything, have similarities in the opening and in parts of the olfactory journey, but at the dry down and forward for the extended period of your wear, these are not the same fragrance. If I had to give it a percent, I would say that this fragrance at best is 70% Hibiscus Mahajad. All right, guys, so as I said in the beginning, I just wanted to come on here and kind of give you my findings from testing these fragrances side by side and also from testing uh, Hibiscus Magic individually. As I said, I mean, at best, at best, I would say that it's probably 70% Hibiscus Mahajad, uh, but then there's other things that you need to consider, such as performance. But we still need to give Hibiscus Magic time to macerate and see if there's any changes in the note composition and what you pick up on, and of course, in its performance. So I'll probably circle back with you because I'm very curious. I'll probably circle back with you with another comparison video in about two to three months. All right, guys, so that's all I have for you today. Thank you as usual for hanging with me and I will see you in the next video.